All right, it's another episode of Army Life with Tall Jim. If you have, if you see me looking to the side, it's because I'm looking at my little screen here. Um, I just I cannot look into the lens. I gotta look at myself while I'm talking. I know vanity. I'm so vain. I probably think this video's about me. Um, but this week we're going to Fort Lewis, Washington. I was stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington for about three years. Yeah, I was there for three years and I went into Army recruiting. Oh, I've got a few stories about that. Um, but while I was at Fort Lewis, Washington, there wasn't a whole lot of exciting things that went on. I went to church the whole time I was there. But there were a few things that happened that were, you know, no, uh, newsworthy or noteworthy. I almost got pulled over. I didn't get pulled over. I'm on the freeway and I'm flying, man. On the I-5. It was Interstate 5 and I'm flying up the 5. And uh, behind me, I look in my mirror, actually, my rearview mirror, and it's red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And I'm like, ah. So I change lanes. It's a motorcycle cop. And he goes flying by me right up behind the car that was in front of me and pulls him over. Because <laughs> that guy started changing lanes and he started changing lanes behind him. And I'm like, yeah, I went driving by like, thanks, buddy. Uh, so that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Pull the guy over that's leader of the pack. Boom, boom. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I did get stuck in the mud a couple of times when I was at Fort Lewis, Washington. Uh, one time I got, I, I like to go four-wheeling a lot, and I had a Chevy S10. Do not get an S10 to go four-wheeling in. Please, for the love of God. Um, so I get stuck in the mud, and I had to hike all the way back to the barracks. And um, I got this buddy of mine to come and he pulled me out for $40. But instead he, he drives me out there, gets my truck, we chain it up, he pulls me out, I pay him $40. Um, which is actually a deal because it would have cost me $75 or $80 for a tow to come out and pull me out. Then I got stuck a second time up in the mountains. I even forget where I was at. I was up in the mountains somewhere and this guy pulls me out I broke two of his ratchet straps. He was like, you owe me, man don't do me wrong and I said hey man. he gives me a business card of where he works and I said alright and I did I went and bought some ratchet straps when I delivered them to him he was all happy he goes I thought I'd never see you again I thought that was the last I go no I've been raised better than that he goes well I want to thank you man I appreciate that hey hey, hey. anytime you want to go four-wheeling man make sure I'm in the area that's what he said but um so don't go four-wheeling in an S10 um the truck's got no ass so I got stuck in the mud twice. Not now though, I got a uh, FJ Cruiser. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I used to hike up Mount Rainier all the time when I was at Fort Lewis. Uh, well not at Fort Lewis, you had to drive to Mount Rainier. It was about a two, two and a half hour drive, I don't remember, but it was a four and a half hour hike up and about a three and a half to four hour hike down. Uh, but I did, I would hike about five hours up the side of this mountain to where the snow was and I couldn't go any farther and I would hike down real fast get my car and go home. It was about an eight to nine hour day. I would get there about 7.30 in the morning and on six in the evening I'd be heading home. And uh, on one of these trips that I took there, uh, I actually camped out in the bed of my truck. What happened was um, before I get to that, we had these two sergeants. One was my squad leader, one was the platoon sergeant. They were pieces of shit. They had no intestinal, forti uh, intestinal fortitude, testicular fortitude, uh, spinacular fortitude, whatever you want to say. They had no fortitude, no spine, nothing. Okay. But this one sergeant, one of my, the sergeants, my squad leader, one of those sergeants, I didn't find this out until later. I leave Friday afternoon, we're dismissed for the weekend. So I run over and I check the duty board. I'm not on duty. I go, cool, I'm go. I'm out of here baby for the weekend. So Friday I jump in my truck and I head out to Mount Rainier. There's a little, you know, a mountainous area out there, out in the woods where you could drive up in the woods and park. And I parked there and I slept in the back of my truck. Saturday morning, I went down to McDonald's. I got something to eat for breakfast. I drove up to Mount Rainier and I hiked it all day long. Saturday afternoon, I drive back to the mountainous area. I see me a little bit, see me and driving around and go to sleep in the back of my, the bed of my truck. 
Sunday morning, back to McDonald's, have some food. I went to some other mountain. It wasn't mountain there. Some other mountain, and I walked around. I went to a lake. I threw rocks. I, you know, Sunday afternoon, about 5:30 in the evening, I get back to the barracks. I go in. This guy's mad. His name's Sergeant Via, and he just uh, sent me a, a message on reunion.com. <clears throat> but he uh, he was mad because I didn't. He had to pull my CQ duty, which is charge of quarters. I go. You didn't have to pull my duty. Yeah, I had to pull your duty, man. I go, I didn't have duty. I'm not on the board. Sergeant Jones gave you duty. I go, Sergeant Jones didn't give me shit, dude. And I go upstairs. I'm like, the guy's smoking dope. And I go to my barracks, and on the door is a note. And it says, Sergeant, my name, you have CQ tomorrow morning, Sergeant Jones. The guy taped a note to my door. You've got CQ tomorrow morning, Sergeant Jones. He must have done that Friday night because I went up, I showered, I went to the mess hall, ate, went back to my room, packed some bags, and left. It was probably about 7, 7.30 when I left. So sometime after at least 7.30, he tapes a note to my door. You've got CQ tomorrow. What, 8 o'clock at night? 8.30 at night? Dickhead. So I miss CQ. I didn't get in trouble though. Um, nobody even talked to me about it. Um, I even saw the first iron, and and I guess what had happened. I got the story again. I've said this before, but in units, when anything happens, everybody knows about it by the end of the day. But I guess what had happened was um, nobody showed up for CQ. They called the first sergeant. First sergeant called, um, or they said I was supposed to have duty. First sergeant called my squad leader and said, if he, you can't find him, you're pulling his duty. And so Sergeant Jones had to pull my duty for like half a day and he got a hold of Sergeant Via and told him, you got to come in. First sergeant said, you're pulling duty. But I never got in trouble for it because he taped the note to my door and I didn't have it. It wasn't on. So, um, you know, look, for the, any of you who are watching this that are in the Army or going into the Army, and you, you know, you're told you have to replace this person for duty. Don't be taping notes to doors. If it don't come out of your mouth and go in his ear, it's void. It's not valid. So remember that. Um, Sergeant Jones was a he's a dickhead, man. Now if he would have told me, it would have been I would have been I would have been stuck. But I come home after a weekend and it's taped to my door. What the fuck? Um. I used to go to the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington and watch uh, bull riding. I used to watch bull riding all the time. Professional bull riders. I actually got Tuff Hedeman's autograph there. I know, whippy doo. But Tuff Hedeman's a real nice guy. He was really cool. Um, he was a really, really nice guy. I got the book somewhere in here. I probably should have grabbed it. But um, yeah, Tuff Hedeman's time. He was a really cool guy. I uh, saw a bunch of um, great, great bull riders there. And uh, just good, good stuff all around. We had this one female sergeant, and she was really a f f idiot. Um, she used to talk to everybody really rude. She used to get in your face, and she got in my face one day, and I go, get out of my face. Why? I said, get out of my face. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. Go research and come back to me, all right? Don't come up getting in my face. And she started crying, and she goes to the, the uh, I had a different squad leader by this time. The other squad leader, was he? He either left or I got put in another squad or another platoon. But somehow I had this new uh, squad leader. He was a real fucking piece of work. I'm not even going to go there. But he comes up to me and goes, you need to apologize to her. I go, no, I'm not apologizing to her. And he was going to give me an Article 15. I go, fine, go for it. I go, you give me an Article 15, I'm going to ask for a court martial, and then I'm going to charge her for getting in my face because she was this close. So he just goes, all right, let's drop it, but don't ever do that again. About a week and a half later, a week and a half later, I kind of observed, as I looked over and I observed her cussing out these soldiers, calling them MFers and getting in their face, and I'm effing this and that, you MFers ever do that again. So I went back to that, that squad leader, I go, remember how the sergeant, she came up to you and she was all crying and he was rude to me. He goes, well, you, sh you need to be respectful to sergeants. I go, what about privates? He goes, well, of course, privates are soldiers. We respect them. I go, then you need to go tell her that because she's over there calling them a bunch of MFers. What? I go, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, we're not supposed to disrespect her, right, Sergeant? But it's okay for her to disrespect soldiers. Huh. Give him respect. On that note, my first sergeant, uh, the first sergeant I was talking about a minute ago, he was a really nice guy. He was a cool guy. Uh, he was a big beer drinker. But he had a temper. He had quite a temper. And uh, so we were on our way back from a convoy after a field exercise, and he wanted me to lead the convoy. And I'm thinking, oh, 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 oh. so I'm trying to read this. I don't know. I got a soldier reading the map. I'm driving. He's reading the map. Or was it vice versa? I don't remember. But somehow, we couldn't get over, so we missed the off-ramp. Well, he comes flying up next to me, and he goes, you stupid mother. Right? And I'm like, what the hell? So I went to the commander, and I said, you know, this first sergeant's really out of control. I go, I'm going to tell you what, uh, ma'am, because we had a female company commander at the time. I said, I'm going to tell you what, ma'am. <clears throat> I said, I think it's unprofessional. It's disrespectful, and it's not right for a first sergeant to say what he said to another non-commissioned officer. And she went and talked to him about his temper, and I guess he had done some other things to other people that she finally said, yeah, he needs, he needs to, to get some counseling. So she went and talked to him, and it was wrong for me to do that. I just want to say on video, because non-commissioned officers should work things out between each other. but. He had just, and it wasn't the first time that he had cussed anybody out, so I think it was one of those things where he had just kind of got my last nerve. But I did go to him, and I said, first, sir, and I said, yeah, I, kind of, I, I was wrong. I, I should have come to you. He goes, well, I guess we're both wrong, sir, because I should have never cussed you out. He goes, uh, he goes, non-commissioned officers don't call each other MF and this, and he goes, and I, we shook hands, and it worked out. But and then let me tell you about that first, sir. Now, this is rumor control. Um, alleged, I don't know if this actually happened, but I had heard from somebody. So this first sergeant went to Korea. He got stationed in South Korea. And probably about seven or eight months after he got stationed there, this guy comes to our unit from South Korea, this sergeant. He gets stationed in Fort Lewis from South Korea. And we were telling old war stories. We start talking about that first sergeant. He goes, yeah, first sergeant was in my unit in uh, Korea. We go, really? You knew him? Yeah, he got demoted to uh, E7. We said, what? He got demoted. He got his, uh, he got a stripe taken. We go, what for? Punching a soldier out? I guess apparently, allegedly, and this, this sergeant is saying, he went into a bar and he was trying to hit on this female soldier. This other guy comes up and she goes, she's with me. He goes, I don't get back off, troop. He goes, are you pulling rain? Cut me in a bar? And they got into a pissing contest and he punched this soldier right in the mouth and broke his teeth out and got demoted. <laughs> so I guess his temp, I guess the little talk didn't help. I guess his temper still flared. Guys, come on now. So next week, I'm going to talk about South Korea. It's going to be about, next week will probably be a short episode. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I can mix some uh, <clears throat> recruiting in there. Because I only got one story left to tell about Fort Lewis, and it's South Korea. You guys got to hear South Korea's story. You've got, you, you got to hear this. It'll be about seven or eight minutes um, to tell the whole story, all the stories in South Korea, but oh, some things happen there. You, If you miss South Korea, let me just give you a little a bit of what I'm going to talk about. Do they eat dogs for real over there? Find out next week. And what do they drink over there that drives people batty? In fact, one guy lost his freaking mind for real, and a sergeant gets a uh, rectum pucker factor of 10 because he gets scared. Hey, tune in next week, guys, and you'll hear those stories. South Korea. <laughs>